walk through the garden and see what kind of pests we can find today and put them in order of how much I hate them. In my number five spot, we've got tomato hornworms. They can completely devour a tomato plant in a day. When you see damage to your plant like this, it's usually always a tomato hornworm. As you can see, the leaves are definitely their favorite part. So to find it, just check any remaining leaves. Not seeing anything on this plant, so I'm gonna check my others. Well, he obviously moved in next door, as you can see by the damage. So we'll check this whole plant from top to bottom, under the leaves, and there he is. It didn't take long to find him, but they can be very sneaky. A good trick that you can do is come out at night with a black light, and tomato hornworms will actually glow under a black light, so they're a lot easier to find especially once the plants are bigger, or if you're worried there's more than one. An easy way to take care of them is to spray BT all over your plants. Doesn't harm any other bugs or your beneficials, but it will kill all of the worms. You can spray it all over your plants, and when the worms ingest it, it actually makes them think that they're full so that they stop eating, and they actually starve themselves to death. I have used that method before, but I like this one even better. After seeing my poor little tomato plant, for some reason this is so much more satisfying. While I was out for my stroll, I found this guy. This is the larvae from a black swallowtail butterfly. Though it can be easily confused with the monarch butterfly larvae, this one actually has polka dots that really differentiates it. The swallowtails really love parsley, and I have plenty to share. So unfortunately for my chickens, he will live another day. I have seen some serious damage on my okra plants the last few days, and I have not been able to figure out what it was. We have had a ton of rain and definitely a lot of backsplash from the ground, but that's not what's causing this. I will find this pest. Aha! Number four. Trust me when I say that these are not green ladybugs. There's actually no such thing. These are cucumber beetles. And regardless what anybody says, they do bite. I'm not currently growing cucumbers, so they figured okra was the next best thing, apparently. Usually if it's not a bad infestation, I try and handpick. But these things are a bugger to catch. And I've been bit so many damn times that I don't want to touch them with my hands. But... You know what is the best pest control for these beetles? Yep. And I know what you're thinking. Why don't you just let your chickens roam around the garden to eat all the bugs? Well, it doesn't really work that way because they'll ruin everything else. So we just let them free range in the rest of the yard where I don't have vegetables planted. Or else they'd be number one on my list for what can ruin a garden. In my number three spot, I grew this one especially for y'all. I had completely given up on growing brassicas. That's any kind of cabbage, broccoli, kale, cauliflower, and this is why. I don't live in a particularly cold climate, so not only do I have to fight with timing because of the heat, but I battle severely with cabbage loopers and cabbage worms. As you can see, in a very short time, they can do a significant amount of damage. If you're not sure what's going after your brassicas, it's probably these guys. Much like many pests, they like the new growth. So peel back a leaf or two and you'll find them. By far the best way to deal with this pest is to use BT or row covers because you just cannot stop them from laying eggs on these plants. Since I grew this one just to show you this horrible pest, I have other things in mind for this plant. Not only do chickens like cabbage, but there's a tasty treat in between each leaf. And number two on the list is aphids. I absolutely hate these things. These are the bane of every gardener's existence. A couple good indicators that you have aphids are yellow spots all over the leaves. And that's because the aphids suck the sap out of your plants. Another great indicator is the ants that are all over your plants because ants are not actually doing anything to your plant, but they are farming the aphids. Aphids actually have wings and can fly from plant to plant. Ants actually paralyze aphids with hormones on their feet and then pull their wings off so that they can't leave. 
the hormones also inhibit the ability for the aphids to grow their wings back. So the aphids being forced to stay wherever the ants keep them continue to suck the life and honeydew out of your plants. The ants then excrete the honeydew out of the aphids, and that's their food. Chickens are useless when it comes to aphids, but good God, they can be cute. For this, we gotta break out the big guns. This seven dust will definitely kill the aphids, but it's difficult to get it on the underside of the leaves. So I really wanna make sure that I just go around the base of the plant really well where the ants are coming up and down. Suck on that, stupid aphids. If you had not already guessed it, my number one worst enemy on the planet is the squash vine borer. This ugly POS will destroy entire crops. I hate, 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 loathe entirely the squash vine borer. And what really sucks is usually you can't see them. What you will get a glimpse of from time to time is this ugly moth that lays its eggs usually at the very base of your squash plants. They look like little orange dots. And once they hatch, they dig their way straight into the base and live on the inside of the plant and eat it from the inside out. So you'll have big, beautiful plants that are just loaded with squash and you get so excited. And literally overnight, your plant can look like this. Oh, the devastation. I've been checking these plants daily and I haven't seen any yet, but they'll come. They always come. So let's talk about preventative measures. Well, unlike your brassicas, like broccoli and cabbage, etc., that does not need to be pollinated for you to get the vegetable that you want. Squash definitely does. So you can do row covers, but you do have to hand pollinate because squash is actually a fruit. What I've seen before, and I've actually tried this myself, is wrapping the base with some kind of medical tape or aluminum foil so that the squash vine borer can actually chew his way through. And it'd be a great idea if it actually worked, but they'll just lay their eggs and crawl through the leaves and leaf stems. You can physically go through and cut them out, but this does just as much damage to your plant as the vine borers do. The moths also cocoon themselves over the winter time in your garden beds. So if you don't rotate your crops, you're gonna get them again. The only other method that I have found is taking BT and because you can't spray it on the outside of the plant, because remember the worm is on the inside of the plant, you have to get needles and inject it into the plant. Problem is, needles aren't as easy to come by as I thought they were. When I first saw this idea, I thought it was brilliant, and I went to my local pharmacy to try and get some needles. They asked me what my medical condition was, and I told them my hatred of squash vine borers. And I realized at that moment, when they were staring at me, how crazy I sounded. And they obviously didn't give me any needles, so I had to order these off of Amazon. I do wish that I ordered a thicker gauge because these needles are really tiny and they get clogged up really, really easy. So always remember to shake up your BT really well, but it sometimes still doesn't work. I tried that needle like 10 times, but for the sake of everybody's sanity, I'm just gonna get another one. This did still take me several tries, but I did finally get enough. At this point, if you do not hate squash vine borers as much as I do, I'm gonna use a belt for dramatic effect. Since I still haven't seen a squash vine borer, I'm purely just doing this for educational purposes. But I inject it right into the stem and it is easier if you find a soft spot on the stem to inject it into, then it won't get so clogged up. If I taught you anything today, don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss our next video and don't forget to grow big and go homestead.